keep your blaster handy, the West is a dangerous place. Fight to survive as men turn to monsters and the dead rise on the Wild West Exodus Hub at beastofwar.com. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of War Hub. Take command of elves, dwarves and orcs in this game of masked fantasy combat on beastofwar.com. Hi guys, well this is it, we get the chance to unbox the Xylus Horizon, the brand new two-player starter set yeah. from Gates of Antares. We're joined by the legendary John Stallard of Warlord yeah. Games, and... Yeah, <laughs> you've been excited for this. I have, I have. We've been running the, we've been running a kind of like a a, a live project blog, yeah. where we've been building up some Antares stuff, and we've just been, we've been gearing up for this. This is the biggie now, because it's not only a two-player starter set, mm. but this is it, the first sight of the new big hardback official yeah, rule book. Full rules. So it's, um, yeah, do you want, shall we crack it yeah, open? Yeah. Well, first up, look at the artwork on the front here. Give me a close camera. Look mm. at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? It is. It that is absolutely beautiful. It's fairly intense. I wonder will some of the 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 more seasoned gamers out there maybe recognise a homage or something there. I <laughs> think they might. If you've been around thirty yeah. years or so, you might yeah. so, see where that. First thing we're getting up is our main rulebook. Yeah. Nice big hardback rulebook with lovely painted miniatures all the way through, full yeah. color. Now this the the all the weapon profiles and everything yeah. in here. It's, it's worth saying at this stage, you know, it's a, we've so much to say about Antares. Um, it's a game by Rick Priestley yep. of uh, Warhammer 40k fame. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, uh, John, it, it's the game he's always wanted to make, yeah? Yeah, that's, that's how Rick describes it himself, the game he always wanted to write. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now he's done it. So um, it's, it's a hard sci-fi uh, game. Now, it's, it uses a, a lot of familiar uh, mechanics from bolt action, but it is very different in a lot of other ways. Because uh, the way it was put to me is that bolt action was a lot of squishy men against other squishy men, and they they're all fairly balanced in how they yeah. how they did yeah. it. Well, a man is a man. Yeah. This mm -hmm. it is all forms of humanity, yes. but the but there's much more variation in kit, weapon profiles, and, and everything else. Even the else. evolution, which is what gives yeah. you the style of some of the different races, mm -hmm. which I just think is beautiful. So you'll recognize uh, things like the hand in the bag uh, dice draw uh, mm -hmm. activation, but it's moved to a D10 uh, yes, system has. with a, a roll under mechanic. And what that D10 spread gives is much more uh, variation for creating um, much more nuanced effects mm -hmm. uh, between the different weapons and pieces of equipment and kit. It also completely changes up how your bonuses work. So now that a, a plus one or a minus one, mm -hmm. it changes how the segments work whenever you're getting that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, this is it. This is the, the, yeah. the full on rule book. So if yeah. you've been waiting for the, the I, I suppose, the definitive yeah. guide to Antares, yeah. this is well, not it. I've noticed a little something in here. Mm -hmm. We have jet bikes. And yeah. heavy drone platforms, which look beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I want them. But that's that's the Concord. That's the first faction that you're getting in this box. Mm -hmm. You are the the biggest society in the Antares universe. So they're the yeah. most advanced, best weapons, best armor. You know, mm -hmm. so nice start. And humans. And human. Now that's an important point uh, in the background to Beyond the Gates of Antares, in that humanity has spread throughout the universe, throughout mm. time and space. They discovered these kind of gates mm. that, that became the gates of Antares that linked various parts of the universe via both time and space. It was, it's was it been put to me now. But over the course of all of this, humanity has evolved and changed mm. into almost like a number of subspecies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, now, there's six factions in the game currently. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to list them for me? Okay, so first up we have the Concord. Mm -hmm. We then have the, the Boromites. We have the, the Gar, who are also in the box. They are the yeah. little gremlin A guys. personal favourite of yourself, John. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who else do we have? We have the Freeborn, who are sort of the, the traders of the, the interstellar spaceways. Mm -hmm. We then have, oh, I forgot their name. I forgot their name. <laughs> the the Algorin? Or, Algorin, yes. Yeah. And one more, I think, is it? The Boromites, or maybe uh, you've already said the Boromites. The Boromites I've mentioned. Yeah. I've done the Boromites. 
Uh, yeah, the Asaran. Yes. Mm. So that was the one I forgot. So in the in the starter set we have um, the the Concord and the, the, Gar. the Gar. So um, the the rule book itself has all the rules. It yep. has a ton of background at the back yep. uh, if you and want it. it and has all the army lists mm -hmm. and all the special weapons you're going to need. Tons of fluff in here and some nice shots of the minis on the table, which I yeah. really like. But we have the Gar in the box as well. Mm -hmm. Gar in their battle armor, the big mechanized guys. Well, let's get stuck in the right, box, right, will we? Let's, let's put so, the beautiful rule book right, out the way. Under, after you've uh, opened up your rule book, yeah, we get you, a cheat sheet, yep. which is incredibly useful. Yeah. You then get a quick start guide, which is going to take you through your first turns of the mm -hmm. Gates of Antares to get you the first mechanics down, get you into that headset of, okay, this is how I move, this is how I shoot. This is how I duck for cover. This is what happens when I do this, that, and the other. Yeah. Okay, so nice and handy. Five pages. Yes. Five pages, and you have yes. the basics of the game. Yeah. You, you have a very capable little war game just after five pages. Yeah. However, once you get used to that, then the real nuances of the game start yeah. to open up. All the, the additional weapon profiles mm -hmm. and how to deal with things like pinning and uh, stuff yes. like that. It's, it's, it is and fascinating. You also have a nice little three-dimensional instruction manual at the back here for mm -hmm. both your factions, which I really, really like. I think it's very useful. Right, now on to some of the core components. Mm -hmm. So, uh, sprue of bases. Yep. Nice and handy. You then get four sprues, which are identical, of the Concord. So, mm -hmm. I'll put one under camera here, and you can see you've got the parts of your drone, you've got two little mini drones, weapon options, mm -hmm. and other weapon options here for your drone. Yeah. You then come to your main troopers, which are coming in a few different parts. So, you have your legs, mm -hmm. you have your main body back, uh, mm -hmm. Main body fronts are here. Yep. You then have your heads and your basic weapon arms. Now, each squad in this is basically coming with a plasma rifle. Mm -hmm. Plasma rifles are quite nasty because they have a strike value too. What that means in game is it's knocking your armor back by two. Mm -hmm. So you have that sort of a, a sliding scale. So from bolt action, it was just you would roll the hit, you would roll the wound. Mm -hmm. These, you have a sliding scale of your armor, yeah. which I like. It's a nice change to the game. It's showing sci-fi high-tech armor, which works really well. Just looking through it quickly, looking at the weapon section, I think there's, I counted 45 different weapons yes. uh, without going into the vehicle section, so there's a <laughs> huge mm -hmm. variety of kit, which yes. means that 10-sided dice is, mm -hmm. has all the different permutations in there to and, go up and, and down. That's, that is sci-fi. That, yeah. you know, that's why whenever you come to, to science fiction, if you're going to have all these mm -hmm. technologies, these technologies need to be represented. Yes. You know, um, so the, 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 the nuances of this game are extraordinary. Mm -hmm. you know, let, let me give you some examples that I have noticed uh, even in the time that I've, I've spent with the rule book. You know, the, the individual force organization mm -hmm. options for each of the factions is tuned to the particular faction. Mm -hmm. yeah. there, are, there are special rules um, to give narrative flavor um, to each faction that that uh, uh, come at you in surprising ways. For example, uh, Justin, if you open the the poly ah, dice yes, there. Yes. Oh, the poly dice. Oh no, sorry, not the poly dice. Yeah, the order, the, the order dice. dice yeah. Yes. So there's your your order dice. Basically, in the game, they go into a bag, and uh -huh. you, you and your opponent draw one per turn, and that's who's yeah. going to get to go. So. The important one for what I'm about to say is the black one. Yes. So this one, I was actually wondering why there is a black one when it's a a two force game. Well, what that is is the Gar yeah. have uh, they use disruptor kind of technology, okay. okay? And that is a special dice for the Gar that whenever they're on the battlefield, they mm. put one black one in. If you're playing uh, more specific narrative games, you might put more in. Mm. And if at any point one of those is drawn, okay, you then draw another dice, right. and whoever's color it is right, so has to go down because okay, they've been so caught up in the effects of the disruptors. Right, so if I drew a black dice and then a green dice on the heels of it, yeah. one of the Concord is being forced to go down. Correct. Correct. Right, so do I pick, because it's me doing this effect, do I pick or do I give it to the Concord player? The Concord player picks. Okay, yeah. or I assume if I pick myself, then I pick. Yes. Okay. No, the, so that's, the, it's nasty, but it's not as bad as I thought. Yeah, but what it is... It, for me, is it, it's taking the 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 flavor of an army, mm. and it, it's it's introducing flavor components of the army into all aspects of the mechanics. Mm. You know, it's not just saying, oh, it's wep weapons profiles and special rules. Mm. It's saying, no, 
actually there are side effects of this army that can affect the battlefield. Well, the Gar, the Gar are just unspeakable people who use all sorts of weapons, which mm. may even do themselves in in the end. Yeah, they don't care. They they're after humanity. Mm. But they just don't like the humans. Yeah, well, you see, that, that's the thing I noticed reading some of their fluff. The, the Guard don't actually create anything. Everything they do is through slave labor and conquered peoples. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so these are, I think we can call these the big bad of Antares. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, it's this kind of uh, details that, are, that mm. for me is really bringing the flavor yeah. um, of the game uh, to the forefront now. Mm -hmm. um, right. Let's continue. What else yeah. have we got in the box? Uh, well, we have our, our D10s. Mm -hmm. So if I pour these out... Ooh, actually, hang on. What the hell is this? Well... What, what, well, what is this abomination? That is a legendary D3 that even Rick Priestley himself didn't know existed until recently. <laughs> okay, okay. He even writes in the rules that they don't I, exist. I, but they I, do. I want to be the first person on the internet to roll a D3. Well, you'll, har you'll hardly be the first, but you may go for it. And what did you a get? One. You got a one. Of course you got a <laughs> one. Hang on, hang on. This game is all about rolling under, so one might be good. A one may be good. What well, actually, there's a D3 and a D4 in the box. Uh, although, and a D6. So although the system is primarily D10 based, yeah. it does use the, the poly dice for, for other aspects. For example, like uh, some weapons mm. have a, uh, a random amount of damage that they do, so they mm. might roll a D4 for that particular right. weapon. Or sometimes some weapons apply a random amount of right. pinning and you, you would use a D4, D6, or maybe a D3 for, for, okay, that, so for those kinds of effects. D3, D4, D6. Yeah. I, I'm still trying to get over the fact that you actually made a D3. Well, it's, it, it, it's an interesting, it's an it's interesting dice, isn't it? It's so different. It's a, no, it doesn't have, it doesn't have, the, the, it doesn't have the, the gravitas of the D100, does it? But, you know... <laughs> I, I don't know. It's, just, it's such a quirky little thing. That, and I like the material it's made out of, just this sort of marbled effect stuff, which yeah. is quite cool. Yeah, so it's, it's very different. Okay, let's keep going. Yep. Um, okay, next up we have a couple of metal guys. Now, this is where we're getting into this particular version of the starter set. Mm -hmm. So, John, can you take us through... Uh, this is the, the release version of the starter set. That's correct. This is for the first few thousand uh, box sets uh, on release. If you buy it, you will get these two fantastic free miniatures, mm -hmm. which are two character models, which uh, okay. we'll go so through. We have our two characters here. So if you go in nice and close, Warren. So here they are here. So who are these guys, John? So the, the, the guy, the, the little guy is called Fartok. Okay. And he is a, a kind of like a renegade Gar, John. Yeah? That's what Gar look like when they're out of their crunchy shells. Yeah. Really? Rather pathetic, <laughs> pathetic, rather than just weedy humans. Mm. They're, they're not quite sure where they came from, but, yeah. uh, uh, but they've certainly got it in for humanity. And yeah. they're, a bit, I suppose, in a way, a bit like a Dalek, a bit helpless outside its yeah, machine. Yeah, fair enough. But monstrous when encased in metal and with great big grabbing, crushing yeah. stuff. Well, I, I see our main hero here. His other hand has actually ripped the head off a Gar mech. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Which yeah. is quite badass. So I'm, I'm expecting him to be quite heroic. Well, he's, him. he's Kalek and he's actually a Concord strike leader. Now, he has special rules in the back of the book, yeah. uh -huh. but he has a very particular personality in that he's, he's right. one of these guys that very much cares for his men. So yeah. as damage is dished out, uh -huh. he can actually take some of the damage on himself. Ah, so he's leading from the front then? Yeah, to try and uh, okay. um, protect his guys. But there's a, there's a very interesting story uh, mm -hmm. about uh, Fartok, because uh, this is Fartok, it's an exclusive miniature yeah. in, in him outside of his kind of armor and stuff like that. Right. But he's actually, he's, what well, he's a renegade, John. He is, he used to be one of their top men uh, in their... In their hierarchy of fighting. Mm -hmm. There is only fighting. There is no, no such thing as heroism. It's just what they all do. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only thing that's important is that you succeed. Um, it's a bit like the Russians in World War II. <laughs> it all goes very well until you lose one battle. Then it's off to the gulags for you. Ah. They put you back into the mines or execute you or humiliate you. <clears throat> and he's the only one man who said, no, you're not going to do that to me. The yeah. old fart talk. <laughs> Instead, he legged it <laughs> and uh, escaped and formed a a sort of a slave's revolt, if you like. Ah, so yeah. a bit of a Spartacus. Ah. I am Fartok. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they sent him, uh, uh, the Gar sent out a, mm. a raiding party to go and sw swoop him up, and he killed all of those and yeah. got their battle suits and did it again and again, just like Spartacus. So now he's just disappeared at the moment. He can kind of appear and disappear, but he's still out there. 
Well, he, he's just making friends where he can then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he can fight both humans. Right. Sp he still hates humans, uh, but he also hates Gar. So okay. um, he's, uh, he's on his own, but doing all right. He's mm. the one with the brain cell. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. That's a nice little thing to have in a starter set. So uh, at this point, it's worth pointing out then that this particular starter set is available to pre-order on the 7th of November. Uh -huh. There is, uh, that's the release date. That's yep. the, sorry, that's yep. the, it's available yep. to pre-order now. That's right. Um, it, it releases on the 7th of November. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a limited run, okay? And that limited run includes uh, both of the metal miniatures, but also the hardback rulebook. Uh -huh. When this is gone, mm. there'll be a new version of the starter set that will have right. a smaller softback rulebook. I see. And uh, we probably won't have one or both of, of those miniatures okay. in it. But, so. but we also will keep the hardback rulebook mm -hmm. for people who want just to buy that. If yeah. they wish to buy that, they can still do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so that's, if that's you want much. to get yourself the, the proper set. version, yeah. <laughs> the big set, now is the time to do it. Right, what else, yeah. what's next? All right, let's have a look at the, the sprue for the gar. Mm -hmm. They are very, very nice. So, uh, as we can see, we have different head options down along the bottom here. Mm -hmm. A few of the leg components, yep. here and here. Mm -hmm. Main chassis, armor plate, his base. I think, is that perhaps his waist? Yes, that's the waist, yeah. Uh, we then have the front of the carapace, mm -hmm. more components. His arms along here. Yeah, and that's the, the two weapons. Now, there's two different types yeah. um, of, of the, the guard battle suit. There's mm -hmm. the assault battle suit, yeah. and the, the, there's the battle squad and the assault squad. Yes. So they're, they're actually different sprues. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I give you one, just to make sure you have them right. So this is the assault one. Uh huh. So and then let me get this one, so which is, is the battle one. Okay. So now the I main differences the are the weapons. So if you bring so, them up. Yeah. So if you go to camera three, mm -hmm. it's along the bottom here. So close in for me. Okay. So starting from here, this one has what appears to be melee weaponry. Mm -hmm. And then moving across. Well, go back, and I can actually okay. tell you exactly uh, what it is. Okay, so we have this big claw component here. Okay, so that's the pl well, that's the gouger gun. So okay. the, those four, that square there, okay. of up in, in a square, okay, are so the, the four components of the gouger gun, including the arm that connects it to the body. Ah, so here. And yeah. then across, okay, here you have the plasma claw. Ah, okay? I see. So that's from the assault variation uh, of the guard kind of battle suit. Okay, and moving along. And then moving along, you have the standard. Um, well, this is the scar scar cannon. Okay. So um, the, in that one. Yeah. This. Yeah. I assume. Uh huh. And, and then, then across from that, you have the the standard claw. I see. And that's in the the battle squad variation. Okay. Okay. So we have two flavors of them. Yeah, that's and cool. there are six. Six of those, six sprues of those. So three of each six, guy, I assume? Yeah, three of each guy. That's very cool. Um, in the box. Okay, oh. what's next? Next up is a lovely little thing that we've discovered. This, mm -hmm. which is our pin markers, I believe. Yes. So if we go in close, I actually had John go in and do a little bit of painting on this one. Yeah, just, just to, to pull out the numbers so we can numbers. see them. But I think this is a really nice little addition to it. So you're getting enough of these in here. Keep track of everybody's pins mm -hmm. during the battle. Which I think is just it's a lovely little touch. Yeah. So what the the way that works is yeah, if you so, bring that up yeah. it so the you'll flaming pop one bit. of these out. Yeah. It'll pop into here. Uh huh. And then there's a little bit of a an arrow, arrow on here. Mm -hmm. So you just turn it as you need it. I think people use them for bolt action too. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We then have the final sprue in the box, which mm -hmm. is all our templates. Yeah. So you have your big blast template. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what is this big half moon. Well, they are for the batter drones. Okay. So there, there are very specific uh, kind of weapon profiles. Okay. And it's it, they, they give out kind of like shield effects and, I see, and stuff like I see. that there. So it's. Um, I see. Uh, there's also tokens on that as yeah, well. Yeah, along the bottom you've got a few different status effect tokens, mm -hmm. and then you have your your standard blast here, and then yeah. more tokens as you move on around. But you do get a lot in this little box. Yeah, if there's no space left in the box, that's for sure. Yeah. Now, the 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 whole thing about Gates of Antares is we've said is it's humanity, it's spread, mm -hmm. it has evolved in different ways. Mm -hmm. So the Boromites have evolved and been changed specifically for the mining kind of cultures and stuff they have. Even their weapons are, are yeah. mining orientated. But it was all made possible by these gates. Mm -hmm. And these gates were made by 
some unknown ancient race. So that it's it's they're called the Builders, mm -hmm. and this whole box set is um, part of a, a campaign of mm -hmm. sorts. Um, so it's called uh, the Xylos uh, Horizon. So I'll just uh, I'll let you hold this. that one up. Yeah, I'll put it here. So Xylos Horizon. Now Xylos is a planet mm -hmm. um, where kind of builder ruins Aha. have been found. I see. So uh, there's a, a, a scenario um, uh, built into this that what, what has happened is that the Concord and the Gar mm -hmm. have ended up on this. The Gar have ended up there primarily because, as John says, they're so warlike. It just happened to be a convenient place for a staging post to commit more war. Yeah. Um, the Concord have discovered these builder ruins and are trying to to, well, to learn from oh, this. Look, ancient yeah. tech, they're more advanced than us. We need to get our hands on some of this stuff. But the Concord are in trouble. Uh huh. They're they're in trouble. The Gar are really putting it on. Mm. So there's kind of reinforcements being brought in, I and see. that's where the other races are making an appearance on Xylos itself. So uh -huh. keep an eye out for Xylos. It's uh, it's got cool. it's got a lot it's got a lot ahead uh, in that instant uh, mm. in that storyline. Right. Do we have some of the bits built? Of course, we have some of the bits built. Do you think this would have came in and me not just go, oh shiny, gimme? Okay, let's see, let's All see right. them. First thing I want to show off is my favourites. Mm -hmm. Have a look at the gar here. Look at these big nasty guys. So this is your assault one, yes, Warren, with the the gun on it. Ye uh, yes, and that's the gar that's the garger yeah, gun. The yeah. Uh, so that's the, the assault. Uh huh. And then we have the regular guy. This is the battle the battle squad. Yeah. Oh, that looks like a big triple Gatling gun that he's got strapped onto his arm. Yeah, the scour cannon. <sighs> Lovely. And the detail on them is absolutely fantastic. Now there is a little posability in these because of all the the ball joints that you can see here. Yes. Mm. So you can sort of play around with the poses. So if you stick these onto some scenic bases or something, you can get some really cool poses on the gun. Yeah, because even the legs and stuff like that are exactly. multi-part. I was having a play with the uh, with Aye. the legs, being able to, to pose Aye. it further up. But can you uh, show us uh, one of those in scale to the actual Concord guys as well? Oh, because of course, if you um, give me two seconds. It, it's interesting to see just how big they are oh, um, so when they're in their battle suits. So, so if we go into the close camera, mm -hmm. have a look. Look now, at how British they are compared yeah, to now standard you can Concord start to Trooper. See. Mm. You know, they are big, they are brutal, they are hard as nails on the tabletop because I've been reading up on the rules of them and I've been arguing with John as to who's playing who. He wants the gar and I want the gar, so we might have a little bit of a dust up to see who's getting to play them. <laughs> but let me grab the last couple of little minutes here for the Concord. Mm -hmm. So the Concord themselves, if I put them in here, come along with tons of little drones and stuff. Yes. So we have this one, which is a light drone mm -hmm. with its weapon systems. And then we have our, our C3 squad yeah. here, who are very cool guys with their plasma weapons. Mm -hmm. So if I bring these on into shot, sorry, you can see them all. So we have our, our commander who has to be pointing. Mm -hmm. We have everybody else armed with their plasma rifles. And the plasma rifles are actually a very interesting weapon because they have a dual profile. Mm -hmm. You can fire them at a long range, right? So yeah. single shot, full beam, you can go about, I think, 50 inches with it. Mm -hmm. You then have the scatter version, which mm -hmm. is a shorter range, but you're getting two shots with it. Yeah. So it's, it's a nice change to see high-tech weapons have multiple firing options in the game. Yeah, and there's a lot of that in the weapon profiles in the book. A lot of the weapons mm -hmm. have these kinds of adjustable profiles to, yeah. to, to change their effects and to, to give you more tactical depth. Mm -hmm. there, there's, there's a huge amount of tactical range within this well, game that we're you discovering. Have your ex you have your effective lane range, your long range, and your extreme range. Mm -hmm. So the further away you are, the less effective you are because, well, you're having to shoot further. Yeah. You know, so what might seem like a massive, gigantic range, you're having to shoot it really far away and it's your extreme range. Mm -hmm. You're not really going to do much with it. You're not going to hit too often. That's when you need your targeted drones in there. To, uh -huh. if, you get, if you get your drones knocked out, then uh, you're uh -huh. not going to hit anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. there we go. So they're, they're part of part and parcel of the combined force. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're you're seeing high tech warfare then. Yeah. Whenever these yeah. things all have to come together to work together to make it work. Yeah, yeah. if you don't, you you'll get stuffed. Exactly. You will. Yeah. So uh, one of uh, another one of uh, Rick's kind of um, keystones to the whole thing has been this idea of the combined arms that mm -hmm. that, uh, that it's the synergies between the profiles of your army mm -hmm. that that force it to work. And drones are a huge huge part. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, of how all the, pretty much these armies yeah. uh, all play. 
Yeah, well, I mean, like this drone, I've actually armed it with the, the plasma weapon that it comes with. Mm -hmm. Because against the GAR, its other weapon option isn't all that effective. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, what was the name of the other weapon option for this? Warren, do you remember? On the back of that? I think it is. Uh, yes, whenever, if you full in one, you should see the, the drone, and you have two weapon options yes, there. Yes, it's, it's called the Subverter Matrix. Yes. Now, this um, is or you have the plasma weapon. light support. Yes, yeah, so the plasma light support's what I put on because the other one does nothing to the gar. Mm -hmm. What it does is, it actually gets them and takes their dice out of the bag. So you can right. take away their activation. And it's not just, okay, I'm going to target you and do that to you. It's everybody within a bubble that uh -huh. affects. So it's very scary. Yeah. So all of a sudden, yeah. half my so force stops. If you set it up right, and yeah. get it in, yeah, then, uh, you can get you're outwitting your opponent. It's not just blowing things up, is it? No, no. It's, you're, it's you're, maneuver, counter-maneuver. Mm -hmm. that a lot of you know, gamble. <laughs> technological right, counter warfare. Yeah, yeah. Is Rock, a paper, scissors. Mm -hmm. But the gar could not be scrambled. So well, it doesn't affect them. I did really not like. know that. <laughs> the yeah. gar cannot be hit with that. Right. So. Um, that's what you get in the box. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, I had a chat with Rick, and I was uh, I was asking. My first question was, Rick, if we get multiple boxes, can we use all the stuff that's in it? And he, he assured me, absolutely yes. If you're going to make buy a box each and mm -hmm. split it up and divide it up between you, um, everything that's in the box is core troop profiles. Right. So it's so, all backbone. So it all fills out the the backbone yeah. uh, of your larger army. Mm -hmm. There are a, it's a, a ton of stuff on the way, John. You know, yeah. where, where where are we headed with Antares? Well, um, well, as Rick says, you don't know what's beyond the gates of Antares <laughs> yet. That's his cop out. Uh, but if you look through the rule book, um, you'll see there's uh, uh, probably about fifteen tanks, vehicles, jet bikes, skimmers. Yeah. Uh, artillery pieces, mm -hmm. various disrupting weird stuff. It's great. So we've got a, a range of plastic box sets to come out for the vehicles for a start, yeah. and a lot more in resin too. I think. Lovely. Uh, which will be neat. Lovely. Yeah. Um, and Rick's already got his eye on the next couple of races as well. But mm -hmm. six six factions to begin with, yeah. which is great to start coming out with. To start yeah. with six is good, mm -hmm. uh, but more to come. And yeah. uh, uh, from the fertile brain of Mr. Priestley. And also some terrain as well. We've got uh, working out on where all these people live, mm -hmm. what the fighting is in built-up areas, yeah. uh, what the what the foliage is, what the planets can be. But lots of ideas in the in the book again about making terrain and uh, mm -hmm. showing off different ways of fighting. Yeah, yeah. And I was actually reading in the book. It's not just a human universe. There are some aliens out there as well. So oh, mm -hmm. good I, I, yes. I want to see some of those. I want to see what's created for that. Well, one final hot tip before we go. Um, uh, after I looked at it, I thought, absolutely. But Rick, well, where do you go next? So I've got a couple of uh, Battle Box and Beyond hot tips for you. So Rick's uh, tip for the, the Concord is um, if you do buy a couple of boxes and split it up between you and a mate, yeah. uh, for the Concord, you need to start focusing on the heavy stuff. So go and have a look at some of the, the heavier weapons profiles uh, within the book. And also, he says, have a look at the command units as well, because that'll fill it out. Whereas for the Gar, if you decide you're going to become a Gar player, he says, check out the outcasts, because one, um, one of your vulnerabilities as Gar is that you have less dice in the bag, and you need some cheaper units, some cheaper options yeah. to build up that you need dice speed pool. bumps, yeah. which is yeah. what these poor fellows have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, and you need to start throwing out more pins, because you'll have very few units whenever you're running the big guys. Yeah, it's... Guys, it's fascinating. Stick with this uh, because we will be looking in more detail at Gates of Antares. John, look, it's been an absolute oh, pleasure. What a what a fabulous Good box set. <laughs> there you have it, guys. That's uh, Gates of Antares. It's it, it's available for order now. It's coming out November seventh. And um, if you want the one with all the snazzy goodness and the big hardback rulebook, now's the time to to jump in and get it. Thank you very much for watching. And we will see you again soon. Enter into the dangerous dungeons of myth as a mighty hero and stand against the darkness. Visit the Myth Hub on beastofwar.com and begin your story. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastofwar.com.